Britain is preparing to take a decisive step in refreshing one of its most enduring anti-submarine weapons, moving the Stingray torpedo upgrade from the drawing board into demonstration and initial manufacture. The Ministry of Defense's procurement notice signals not merely bureaucratic progress but a strategic choice about how to sustain undersea lethality at a time when the acoustic environment is growing more complex and adversary submarines are harder to find, fix and finish. A proposed contract worth up to £500 million would fund the demonstration and initial manufacture phase, with an option for full production that refurbishes in-service Mod 1 weapons to the new Mod 2 configuration. In effect, the UK is choosing evolutionary modernization over a clean sheet replacement, an approach that spreads risk, preserves industrial competence and accelerates delivery to the fleet. This acceleration matters because the Stingray is woven into the way Britain fights beneath the waves. In service since 1983, the lightweight torpedo is integral to the Royal Navy's layered anti-submarine warfare posture and is already employed from multiple vectors, Merlin and Wildcat helicopters can prosecute fleeting contacts with speed and persistence, while Type 23 frigates contribute horizontally launched shots that complicate a submarine's defensive calculus. The Royal Air Force intends to keep Stingray in its toolkit as well, integrating it on Poseidon Maritime Patrol aircraft to sit alongside the US-made MK-54. That mix of platforms, ship, helicopter, and fixed wing, gives commanders a menu of effects, and the Mod 2 path seeks to keep that menu relevant as the undersea battle space shifts. The underpinnings for this move were laid last year, when the Ministry of Defense awarded BAE Systems a £60 million assessment phase contract in June 2024 to build prototypes and conduct in-water trials. That assessment work was not a ceremonial box tick, it was aimed at proving the upgrade route before committing to industrial scale. With that foundation in place, the new contract would run between July 2028 and June 2032, with a potential extension to 2035. Timelines like these often sound remote, but in defense acquisition they are the bridge between today's stockpile and tomorrow's credible deterrent. They also align the torpedo's maturation with a decade when Allied navies expect more frequent contact, literal and figurative with quiet submarines operating in busy littorals and contested choke points. The existing Mod 1 Stingray is a compact but ferocious package, a weapon of roughly 2.5 meters in length and around 267 kilograms, capable of sprinting through the water at up to 45 knots and striking out to approximately 11 kilometers. It hunts with both active and passive sonar and delivers a 45 kilogram torpex charge on impact. Those attributes explain its longevity. It is light enough for helicopters, small enough for surface launchers, and intelligent enough to discriminate targets in a cluttered acoustic picture. Yet longevity can become vulnerability when the threat evolves, and the driving logic behind Mod 2 is the need to adapt sensing, processing, and employment options to cope with quieter propulsion, better countermeasures and the messy acoustics of shallow seas. Officials have not published a shopping list of new features, but the trajectory is visible. Modernization of lightweight torpedoes worldwide is less about raw speed or bigger warheads and more about brains, improved signal processing, more resilient seekers, smarter guidance logic, and better networking with the platforms that launch them. If Mod 2 follows that arcade, the resulting weapon will be less a different spear than a sharper one, better able to hold contact through decoys and maneuvering and more adaptable to launch from a variety of hosts. The inclusion of a refurbishment option is particularly telling. Rather than force the Navy to wait for a full new build batch, the program can harvest the value of existing Mod 1 bodies and elevate them to the new standard, leveraging sunk costs while smoothing the production curve. There is also an industrial and sovereign dimension that deserves attention. The Stingray lineage is British to its core, tracing back to a 1960s decision to pursue a domestic alternative to imported designs and developed by G.C. Marconi, now within BAE Systems. Sustaining this know-how is not simply an employment policy, it is a strategic hedge. Torpedo technology sits at the intersection of sensitive acoustics, 
complex hydrodynamics and high reliability energetics, much of which is not readily traded even among allies. By pressing ahead with a midlife upgrade and tying it to refurbishment, the UK keeps its design and manufacturing muscles flexed, preserving an industrial base that can respond faster when requirements shift. From an operational standpoint, the Mod 2 path strengthens the credibility of Britain's anti-submarine warfare promise to NATO. The Royal Navy's frigates, helicopters, and RAF Poseidons do not hunt in isolation, they knit together into multinational task groups where weapons interchangeability, common tactics and reliable performance are the currency of deterrence. A refreshed stingray that can be queued quickly, launched flexibly, and trusted to prosecute modern targets helps ensure British contributions remain not only symbolic but decisive. The presence of the US MK-54 alongside Stingray on Poseidon reinforces that point, different tools tuned for different problem sets, giving commanders redundancy and choice. Critics of incremental upgrades sometimes argue that they postpone hard choices and risk locking in legacy architectures. There is truth in the warning, incrementalism can become a crutch, but it misses the reality of the undersea fight. The physics of torpedoes have not changed, what has changed is the sophistication of the environment they must navigate. A well-executed midlife upgrade can deliver a near-term step change in effectiveness without the decade-long delay of a fresh start. The key is execution, rigorous trials that reflect real acoustic conditions, honest assessments of seeker performance against modern countermeasures, and integration work that treats the torpedo as part of a kill chain rather than a standalone round. The program schedule, stretching into the early 2030s with an extension option, provides the breathing room to do that work properly. Demonstration and initial manufacture is where prototypes stop being laboratory successes and start behaving like fleet weapons. It is the phase in which software updates are hardened, manufacturing tolerances are locked, and support concepts are tested with maintainers who will live with the weapon for decades. If the UK uses that time well, the fleet will receive a torpedo that feels familiar to operators yet performs like a new instrument where it counts. All of this is happening against a backdrop of tighter budgets and sharper choices. A £500 million headline figure is significant but not extravagant by defense standards, the inclusion of refurbishment suggests a mindfulness about cost per effect that will resonate with planners. By exploiting existing inventories and upgrading them, the program mitigates risk and accelerates the arrival of improved capability to the front line. It is, in short, an argument for practical modernization, shaped by constraints but oriented toward outcomes. The bottom line is straightforward. Britain is not letting a core element of its anti-submarine arsenal drift into obsolescence. By moving the Stingray upgrade into demonstration and initial manufacture and preserving a path to convert Mod 1 stocks to Mod 2, the Ministry of Defense is setting conditions for a smarter, more adaptable lightweight torpedo that matches the threat it is designed to defeat. It is an investment in relevance, the quiet assurance that when a contact of interest appears on a sonar display, whether under a frigate, beneath a helicopter or ahead of a patrol aircraft, the weapon that follows will be ready for the oceans of the 2030s.